The height of Mount Everest was originally worked out using a piece of mathematics that you have studied in very great detail with me on this course. What mathematics was used to work out the height of Mount Everest? Uh, Ibrahim, thank you. Was it trigonometry? Perfect, yeah, trigonometry. You're going to do the same calculation to work out the height of the mountain that I'm currently on. Now, let me just remove my virtual background. There you go, so you get a view behind me. We're looking all the way out over Wales and then England. The total view is, yeah, it's about 100 miles we can see from up here actually, about 100 miles. Welcome to the lesson. Now in the chat function, I'm about to type in the name of the mountain. Okay, so you've all received a chat with the name of the mountain. I would like you to identify that mountain uh, in Google Maps and tell me which country it is in. Okay, I'll give you a minute to do that. Keep Google Maps open because you'll need it for the next task. Yeah, fantastic. Haida, you've done a good job there. You got the name of the town as well. Yep, that's super Ayana. Congratulations. Okay, that's great. Well done. So, um, next question. This mountain, Penny Van, Welsh name, Penny Van. Next question is, there is a town roughly 10 kilometers north of me. Post a chat, what is the name of that town? Okay, that's excellent, guys. Thank you. So you've identified that about 10 kilometers north of me, we have a town that is called um, Brecon. I would like you to use either Google Maps or Google to work out the altitude of Brecon above sea level, height in meters above sea level. Okay. Let's work out uh, what you have to do. So this is the picture of Mount Everest that we introduced for the lesson. This is the southwest face of Mount Everest, one of the most difficult faces to climb on the mountain. And as Ibrahim said, the way the height of Mount Everest was calculated, we're using trigonometry. Surveyors use trigonometry originally to work out the height of the mountain. So let me show you how it works. This is actually one of the original surveying diagrams that was drawn for the surveyors to work out the height of Mount Everest. Essentially, if we imagine we're standing here at point one, the top of the mountain is here at point B, we've got an angle alpha. This is the angle of elevation, the angle above the horizontal, okay? Let's say we can measure the length D, the horizontal distance from our position to the mountain. We need to find the height of the mountain, so that's the opposite side of the triangle. So this is just trigonometry and it's tan. The formula is here, it's this first part of the formula that surveyors have written down. H divided by D is tan alpha. So if we know alpha and we know D, we can use this to work out H. Okay, let me give you your bearings then. So um, the mountain I'm standing on is here. So I'm standing right on the highest point that you can see. It's actually the highest mountain in the southern part of the UK. Uh, I have measured the angle of depression from Penifan down to Brecon. Uh, you need to make a note of this information so you can do the calculations, but it's 5.5 degrees. What does angle of depression mean? Could you put your hand up if you can answer that? Uh, Alim, thank you, yeah, Alim? Um, is it like with one angle horizontal and one below horizontal? Absolutely perfect. Thanks, Alim. So let me just try and draw that on my diagram. Yeah, so if we have a horizontal line extending across here, so that's a horizontal line, the angle of depression 
is the angle below the horizontal. So I'm saying that angle is 5.5 degrees. So if I look down to Brecon from where I am, the angle below the horizontal is 5.5 degrees. Okay, altitude of Brecon here, you've just worked that out. Distance from Penifan to Brecon, this is what I asked you to prepare for today. You need to use Google Maps to work out the distance between Penifan and Brecon, the distance between those two points. So what I'm saying to you is, now that you know the angle of depression, 5.5 degrees, and you know the altitude of Brecon, you know the distance from Penifan to Brecon, you should now be able to work out the height of Penifan. Ah, uh, well done, Hyder. That's good. That's pretty accurate. Well done. Yeah, Alim, excellent. Well done. Yep, thanks, Hashim. That's excellent. Well corrected. And thank you, Uzair. That's um, very close. Um, Sitsi, thank you. That's excellent. Thanks, Monato. Yep. There are a whole bunch of these that are really accurate. This is very impressive work. Let me share my screen again and show you the data that we've collected. So if we have a look at your values, it's the last column that's important. Those are your estimates of the height of the mountain in meters above sea level, Penavan. Now, uh, a quick question for you, an easy question for you based on the statistics we've studied. What would be a good calculation to do with that set of values? What do you suggest? So what would uh, be a good way yeah, exactly, Alan. We'll use the mean to see how good your estimate is. So we're using Excel here. What is the Excel function that calculates the mean? Is it just average? It is, yeah, it's just called average. It's not called mean, it's called average. So if I do average and get these cells, 878.25 meters. Um, what is the actual height of Penny Fan? Some of you had looked that up earlier, I think. Um, 886. That's right, so the actual height is 886. So uh, I will give you a minute to calculate the percentage error in our answer. Okay, um, who's got a percentage error from that, roughly? They got 0 0.871. 0 0.87, okay, so we got less than 1% error. That's absolutely fantastic. Well done guys, you've done a great job on the mathematics here. That's the end of the maths for the lesson uh, now, and I really appreciate you getting involved in this. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>